No one believed me, even from those few people that I, I was able to share this experience with, uh, that this is true, but luckily with the development of the ufology and many great people out there that are doing the research and providing the video evidence, especially uh, with Martin Stubbs, who was uh, in charge of one television uh, station, and he just directed one dish towards the space, and he was lucky enough to pick up the direct, direct downlink from the space shuttles to Houston, and uh, he provided uh, this. Uh, uh, so as you can see, this is on infrared. That is why his black and white is from STS ST3, uh, 63. Sorry, and they are trying to locate the Mir space station. They cannot locate the Mir space station because more than 100 objects are appearing and disappearing from the radar. Those are the same type of craft that I observed on the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And those are those balls of light that I was observing in those times, as you can see clearly, creating an intelligent formation. So you can see we are never alone, and the evidence is all there, and they are keeping this secret, which is not uh, uh, the right way to do. Every time that when there is a storm, you can be completely sure that there are more than 200 objects above the sky charging from the released energy from the thunderbolts. Exactly the same as we go with our vehicles into the petrol station to refuel. They are refueling their propulsion systems with this organ energy, which is discharged from, from the thunderbolts. So this uh, led to the direct contact with the extraterrestrial races. Many of those contacts were positive and, and beautiful, but some of the contacts were extremely aggressive. I got in, in conflict with certain races, one of which was uh, the Grey Collective, and uh, I can confirm that we have a presence from both polarities, both positive and both negative. My life afterwards went into the into direction that I was trying to help uh, uh, as, as many as possible, giving my knowledge to all the people who is open to, to this, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, I just developed a special relationship with every student of mine and I was trying to help him as much as possible to achieve the same. So, in my perspective, this is the way we have to go back to the nature and we have to unite with that energy, understand that energy and how to, how to direct this energy. When I was uh, working on the decoding of the crop circles, uh, that's where the contacts with the crop circle makes, makers intensified to a high degree, especially when I was describing what kind of technological achievements can be uh, achieved through the information delivered by the crop circles. So as you can see here, those balls of light are everywhere. And from the Sri Antra, there is a huge ball of light everywhere. Every time when I was actually working on this, uh, for, for example, this is one group that I worked in in, uh, uh, in Melbourne. As you can see, those orbs are everywhere. Please pay attention to this region here. You will see one of those balls of light penetrating. It's completely intelligent, as you can see, and they're following me all the time and uh, the progression that, that is made. Which takes us to a logical question, who makes the genuine crop circles and why? To the best of my knowledge, at least few extraterrestrial races are making these genuine crop circles and they have different approach, but mainly the approach is that to inform us because our governments are deceiving us. They are not providing us the real situation of the planet, the real situation in the Milky Way galaxy, and especially the real situation, what we really are and what our potentials are. So, to the best of my knowledge, as you can see, more, more than 20,000 uh, crop circles are delivered and usually the question that comes to me is uh, where they're coming from. They're coming from many dimensions and they live on many places, even in physical dimension, even in other dimension, but as you can see, they're using this like a portals. As you can see how they're actually penetrating our dimension, influencing with the microwave energy or electromagnetic energy, if you will. Once again. Okay. So, like I mentioned, to the best of my knowledge, more than 20,000 diagrams are delivered in the past uh, few decades worldwide. 
the military is highly, highly interested into these uh, this, uh, messages that are arriving. And every time there is a boat of light or craft above the fields, uh, the military is picking up on the radar. Immediately there is an order for the fighter jets or the helicopters to intercept uh, those boats of light and to avoid eventual delivery of information, which is of information, excuse me, which is very, very vital for humanity. Usually people come to me and they say, look, are you aware that the government has lasers and harp and everything, all technology that can create a crop circle just in a second directly from the satellite? And I will just say this, if that's the case, if those balls of light are governmental properties, then how come they're spending uh, money for the fuel, just putting and giving uh, order for those helicopters to chase their own property? It does not make sense. It became obvious, at least to me, analyzing a few hundreds of, of diagrams, that there was an open communications from the genuine crop circles and then from the man-made ones, because uh, it's obvious that the shadow government wanted to, to establish this kind of communication, exchanging uh, of, of, uh, of uh, information for, regarding technology and many other stuff. But uh, the NTIs didn't want to play their game because they understand that they are very, very deceivers, how should I say, and that is why they started to put those obelisks. Those obelisks, there are receivers. As soon as certain frequency appears around the fields, which actually, as I mentioned uh, 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 a while ago, uh, these uh, objects are penetrating our dimension, this frequency appears, and that's, that's where they actually are getting there. With the help of the... Discovery Channel, National Geographic, and other media, crop circle phenomena was completely buried. Just everyone is ridiculing this phenomena. Everything is man-made. It's all done. There's nothing to see, and so on and so forth. So how come the military is so interested into this phenomena if that's the case? So as you can see from the left, this is what the best humans can do, what co complexity is concerned, and the real stuff is usually followed by those balls of light that we are talking about. With the human ones, you can see the footsteps everywhere, the crop is completely destroyed. And they remove all the information from this. This, uh, by the way, was uh, achieved by the team uh, Satan in New Zealand, just for example, that people can make these crop circles. Yes, they can make these crop circles, but you can see also the mess that they can make. Back in 2000, uh, uh, Dr. Elte Hasenhoff actually stepped forward, which is very rare for the mainstream scientists, and he actually examined uh, many crop designs, and he noticed that there is a thermal expansion and node latening with, uh, with many of those. He was searching for some uh, matching of the distribution model of node latening, and he found one, and this mathematical model was actually electromagnetic radiation distribution of a point source. The further you, 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 you go from that uh, source, the less light it becomes. Or in other words, the distribution of the node latening is strongest in the crop circle center, and it's less and less as you go towards uh, the, the edges, right? So the difference between the man-made and the real phenomena is that plant is still alive. It's bended even uh, to around 90 degrees, and the plant is still, is still growing. Uh, it was actually exposed to extreme, extreme high temperatures, but uh, in, the, in the split of a second it was cooled also. So for the last, with this 10 to 40 uh, micron diameter pure iron spheres detected with a genuine phenomena which is not present and uh, they're impossible to find with ones that are made by ropes and sticks. They just uh, transmitted a uh, search there is something extraordinary that is happening at the moment in the Milky Way galaxy and search for power L. That was all that I was able to pick up. And when uh, Milky Way galaxy is concerned, we, it's very difficult for us to determine the, the right proportions and the right shape and appearance of the Milky Way because we are seeing it all the time from an angle. But the extraterrestrials are saying that this Milky Way galaxy actually has a seven spiral arms. So before any one of you recognize the all-seeing eye inside this and you say, look, here is another Illuminati agent in disguise, I can assure you that that's not the case, let me just explain about this. I ask, about, uh, and I ask the NTIs about what uh, uh, this thing is, and they said this is neither positive neither negative. It's just simply energy, and the contact uh, which is made actually is polarizing this energy. For the Illuminati, it's meaning... It's meaning something else, but also there is another side of the coin. So let's just analyze for a while, right? Sorry. 
and one of the professors in Germany uh, uh, Linguistic Academy, uh, Professor Kurt Schuldman, actually made a translation and he stated that uh, these writings is matching the, the time of the ancient Sanskrit and the literal translation is the son of the creator comes. So what is this eye that we are seeing everywhere in the space? The interesting thing is that there is a gate and there is something coming from this gate. They are referring to the Sagittarius A star, which is a code name for the supermassive black hole in the Milky Way galaxy center. There is a hole and there is an explosion, as you can see, hole and explosion, and they are referring to this. When those galactic cores explosions happen, there are two things that are appearing. First, there is a cosmic jet that goes perpendicular to the galactic plane, and there is a wave of energy that is spreading along uh, uh, the, the galactic plane towards the edges of the galaxy. When you, when you throw a, a, a rock into the pond, right, or into, into a lake, you will have a disturbance. You will uh, create a concentric circles. You will create waves, right? So that's the same what they are, they are saying. There is a wave. Watch out that there is a wave. And the wave is coming from the galactic center. Again, you can see a plane with birds in two directions. They are actually referring to the galactic plane because they inform me what they are trying to say. And even more birds going into, into two directions and they are referring to this and I will, I will explain this in more detail. The energy is extreme, is, is, is uh, going towards the edges. It's massive, it's flying, it's flying fast. It's going to hit the sun. When it's going to hit the sun, it's going to change how the sun is spending its fuel. It's going to produce that sun moves from its so-called main sequence into what is known red giant phase. So what will happen in our solar system in the near future, right? So for this, we can analyze the pictogram that arrived on July 15, 2008. It is obvious a solar system, and when you analyze, you see that it's completely matching our solar system and the planets in it. So they even left a dot for a moon and also they left a ring for Saturn. Again, the anomaly was found and uh, the, the crop is not destroyed by the mechanical force. So another parallel. So it's not the first time that those amazing uh, blue displays are, are observed from International Space Station. So someone is referring us very strongly that we pay attention to a certain time frame to a point in time, which is 23rd of December 2012. Just seven days after, on July 22nd, 2008, update appeared, uh, and which in my perspective is a Rosetta Stone to everything we need to know what 2012 and 2013 event is all about. So let's just analyze this for a while. Our sun is not in the same, in, in, in the same size anymore. It, it become bigger. Uh, Mercury was fallen and Venus was fallen, which leaves us Earth and Mars dangerously close. There is some kind of object appearing uh, very close to, to our solar system, which exactly if you apply astrophysics and you find astronomical charts, you will find that it, will it, is, it is coming from the Virgo constellation. And uh, when I checked the astronomical charts for a new moon in 2012, December, I found that actually it's appearing on uh, December 13, 2012, which is, which is uh, uh, when we will start to observe from the sky something that is approaching from the Milky Way galaxy. And uh, down further, we can see different uh, symbology here, a Milky Way galaxy with a depicted galactic plane, Cosmic snake, cosmic kundalini, or nexus, or whatever suits your terminology, snail, spiral, again a new moon, and uh, two stars in Ufiku star constellation, which is uh, very close to the sun in that particular time. But sun changing sun, uh, size, is, is that possible? Definitely it is. This is just a, a small example of the, of the life of a star. From the stellar nebula, we, from, from the gravity, we get two types of stars, average star and a massive star. Average stars is a type of star that our sun is at the moment, which is a yellow dwarf type of star, yellow because of the color of the, of the, of the surface and dwarf because it's a small for a star. When the fuel is exhausted, it moves into the next stage of its uh, life. How should I put it? It becomes a red giant where the, the outer layer gets more cooler. It loses brightness. It gets more reddish, uh, but the core of the star collapses. 
and eventually the outer layer is released and becomes a planetary nebula and the only thing that, that is left from the star is the so-called white dwarf or the core of the star. And the other ones which are massive stars, they go into the red supergiants, but they go into supernova and from supernova they can end up like a neutron stars, excuse me, or mini black holes.